Welcome to Grounded Kids Assembly. Please join us in our opening led by Aurora, Maya, and Rihanna. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I am a peace builder. I pledge to praise people, to give up the talents, to seek wise people, to notice and speak up about hurt I have caused, to right wrongs, to help others. I will build peace at home, at school, and in my community each day. Let's pray. Dear God, please bless all those people that are affected with the coronavirus. Please bless all the families who have lost their loved ones. And please help us all to be safe. Please bless us as we now go to online school. Please bless the teachers who will be guiding us. And please bless all the people that are hurt or suffering. Help us all to have a good day today and help us to help one another and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's recite our four core values together. The first one is emotional intelligence, the power to see, understand, and impact feelings. The second one is respect, the power to treat yourself and others like God's children. The third is integrity, the power to do the right thing at all times. And finally, grit, the power to never give up on your goals even when it's tough. Today, we're going to be focusing on the core value of integrity, which is the power to do the right thing at all times. And the specific word I want you to think about today is the word initiative. It means the power to do things independently without even being asked. When we usually talk about people having initiative or doing things independently without even being asked by anyone to do so, we say that they're taking initiative. I want you to take a look at this video clip. Do you suffer from lack of motivation, general fatigue, fear of failure? Has your doctor diagnosed you with perfectionism or procrastination? Is getting yourself off of the couch the hardest thing you'll do today? It's frustrating to see everyone around you succeeding in life and getting so much accomplished while you just stay in your pajamas all day long. If so, you're not alone. Millions of Americans today suffer from a rare condition called laziness but there is hope for you. Initiativo is an experimental medication that has been shown in nine out of 10 of clinical trials to help improve the symptoms of laziness. Patients report being able to accomplish goals and help others and have experienced higher energy levels and feelings of satisfaction and joy. You should talk to your doctor if you notice that taking Initiativo causes side effects. Some patients have experienced an unstoppable desire to get things done. 
In rare cases, patients report losing sleep because they have too much excitement about doing things with their lives. Taking Initiativo does not guarantee superhuman powers, the ability to fly, laser vision, tingling spider senses, or the ability to sing like a Disney princess. In case you don't get this commercial, Initiativo is not actually a medication. It just means getting off of your bottom and taking action now instead of sitting lazily on the couch waiting for someone else to do something. If you or someone in your family suffers from laziness, ask your doctor today about taking on-the-spot Initiativo. Take Initiativo today for a more productive and happy tomorrow. Wouldn't it be awesome if taking initiative was just as easy as popping a pill into your mouth? That's kind of how the commercial portrays it, that you just have to take Initiativo daily in order to have all the energy and excitement and passion in real life and to be able to do so many cool things. Well, in our real lives, it takes a little bit more hard work and we have to be really intentional about doing things on purpose if we want to show initiative. But when we do take initiative, life becomes a whole lot easier for all those around us. Let me give you a few examples of things in my life that take initiative. For example, I have a robot and this robot vacuums my house for me. And I don't even have to tell the robot to do anything. I've programmed it so that at a certain time, it can just start and vacuum my house. Amazing, right? Or what about my Netflix account? Even without me thinking about it or even having to search for things, it already suggests things for me to watch. It could say, since you watched this, you might also like watching this show. Or since you watched this movie, you might also want to watch this one. So it's great. I don't even have to think about it. It can just show me exactly what to do. Or at the end of a show, it'll just start the next one automatically so I don't even have to think about it. <laughs> that may not be the best thing. And I have a really cool thermostat in my house that controls the air conditioning and the heaters. It's called a smart thermostat because it starts to notice the temperatures that I like to have in my house. When I turn it on at a certain temperature, I turn it off. When I turn on the AC at a certain temperature and turn it off at another, it starts to notice and learn my patterns so that it will automatically keep my house to the temperature that I like it. Finally, I have a really cool program for my printer called Instant Ink. And I don't even have to think about ordering ink for my printer because once it gets low, the company automatically sends me my next ink cartridge. Pretty awesome, right? Well, most of those objects actually don't show initiative. As I talked about, most of them I actually had to program ahead of time to do things for me. But they sure do make my life easier when I don't have to think of them on a daily basis. However, for other parts of my life, it's not that easy. There are some parts of my life where I have to say things over and over and over again in order to get anything done. This relates specifically to my kids. I have a two-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old. For my toddlers, they don't really have the ability to take initiative right now at their age. They can't really think ahead of time and think, what should I do to keep our house looking nice? Instead, I have to tell them over and over to do something. For example, cleaning their toys. If I don't tell them to clean their toys, this is what my house looks like at the end of every single day. If we want our house to look nice at the end of each evening, my wife and I realize that we have to ask them and be intentional about reminding them about picking up their toys. Sometimes they do it really well and they listen and put things away quickly. Other times we had to remind them over and over and over again. After a while of having to remind them over and over again to pick up their, their toys, we finally decided that we had had enough with reminding them. So instead, if they don't pick up the toys after we ask them to and they move on to something else, we pick up their toys. And you might say, what? You pick up their toys for them? Isn't that not teaching them a lesson? Aren't they gonna just rely on you and take things for granted? No, because when we pick up their toys, they end up in. Toy jail. This is what toy jail looks like. How long do they stay in toy jail? It could be forever. Because in order to get something out of toy jail, they have to do more work for us or some other chore in order to earn it back. It's a stash of toys that has increasingly grown and grown and grown, especially when we're home all day because we can't go out of the house. Anytime that they move from one toy to the next toy and they don't pick up the first toy that they were playing with, it ends up in toy jail. Sometimes they don't mind too much, but other times, when it's a toy they really like, this can turn out into a five minute long tantrum of crying and screaming. 
You might think, why in the world would you do something so mean, like putting their toys in toy jail? The reason is because my wife and I want to teach our kids the importance of taking initiative and the importance of keeping things looking nice. It's our house after all, we want to make sure that it looks good. My wife and I hope that by using this strategy, even though it may cause a little bit of discomfort for them right now, we hope that it will teach them initiative and that they will realize how important it is to clean up even without being asked. Initiative is a huge part of integrity because it means that you're doing the right thing at all times without even being asked, without even someone having to tell you what to do or having someone make you do it. Right now for my kids, I kind of have to make them do it by giving them a consequence for what happens if they don't put their toys away. But what I hope is that they'll be able to learn to take initiative without even being asked by me or my wife. They'll be able to put things away because they know it's important and they know it makes us happy, it makes our house look better, it makes it easier to find their toys later in the future. We don't step on toys and hurt our feet because we stepped on a sharp Lego piece. All of these things are benefits that can come when our kids will take initiative. Initiative can take two basic forms. One of them is the bare minimum. That's when you do something that you have to do. It's a responsibility, it's a chore, it's an assignment, it's something that you have to do. But you can do it without even being asked. For example, you know that your parents want you to keep your room clean. So you can do that even before they ask you to clean your room. You can say, my room's looking pretty trashy right now. I'm gonna pick things up because I like my room looking nice. I wanna be able to find things and not lose things because everything's everywhere. That would be the basic form of initiative. However, initiative can take a whole nother step and go to the next level. For example, you could take a step outside of your room and if you look down in the hallway and you see some dust or some dirt on the floor, you can just sweep it up, keep the hallway clean too. If you walk through your kitchen and you see that someone has dropped food off the table, you can pick that up too even though your parents didn't even ask you to do that. That could be something that you do to take initiative to go one step above and beyond and to do things independently without even being asked to. On this level of initiative, this week there are going to be some responsibilities that you have. For distance learning, you're going to have Zoom meetings that you'll have to attend with your teachers this week. You're going to have math assignments probably, maybe some reading assignments. You might have to read an AR book or two. These are the basic level of things that are expected of you, your basic responsibilities. But instead of having your parents chase you around the house and say, you're going to get grounded if you don't read your AR book, just pick up your AR book and read it. Take the initiative to do that independently without even being asked. If you want to take initiative on a whole nother level, you could say, I'm expected to read two AR books this week, but you know what? I have free time. I'm at home. I can't go out of the house anyway. I'm going to read four AR books because I want to become a better reader and I actually like reading anyway. That would be taking a whole nother step of initiative to do something that no one's even asked you to do. But you wanna do it because it's good for you, you enjoy it, and it's gonna make your life better. Another example, this week you might have chores that your parents have you do. They're busy working from home, trying to get their responsibilities done, and also homeschool with you and teach you how to do things. So they might have some responsibilities. They might say, you need to wash the dishes. You need to help me put away this laundry. Well, that would be your basic level of responsibility. Something you've been asked to do, but once you know what those responsibilities are, you can do them without even being asked in the future so that you make your parents' lives so much easier. I know they'd appreciate that. Or you can take initiative to the next level and say, even though they've asked me to wash dishes and to put away my laundry, I'm gonna just look around and see what are they going through right now? Maybe they're feeling a little stressed. Maybe I could do an extra task that would make their life a little easier and just make my family happier. Or maybe I could make them a card to tell them how much I appreciate all the stuff they're doing for me, especially now that we're all with each other 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Another example, back to the Zoom meetings. You could do your basic responsibility and show up to your Zoom meeting on time without your parents having to drag you there and make you put on your clothing instead of wearing your pajamas. You could, you could do that on your own. Or you could think, wow, my teacher has put a lot of work into this Zoom meeting. They probably never used Zoom before all of this distance learning thing started. What could I do to show my teacher that I really appreciate the amount of work and effort they're putting into teaching me things even though they can't be there with me physically? Maybe it would be writing your teacher an email. Maybe it would be writing a card. Maybe it would be holding up a special sign that you made in front of your Zoom window to say, we love you. You could either choose to do your basic responsibility without being asked or you could take it to the next level 
and actually think about what could you do that no one's asked you to do but can make other people's lives so much better. Finally, I want to address the why. Why should I show initiative? Why should you take the extra effort to do things without being asked? We've already talked about how taking initiative makes other people's lives better. There are things that we love that other people do for us without even being asked to do them. There are things that we love that our devices will do for us without us having to do them. But there's a spiritual reason behind taking initiative as well. And I think it's found in Colossians 3.23, where Paul writes, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord and not for human masters. I think what Paul's trying to say is that whatever we do shouldn't be focused on pleasing our parents, pleasing our teachers, but really focusing on pleasing God. God's given us hands, feet, eyes, ears, brains. He's given us so many things that can be used with so great potential. If we only take the initiative to use those things and the talents that he's given us, there's amazing things that we can all do. And God knows when you take initiative and you actually do things as if you're working for him instead of just working it for the bare minimum for your parents, for your teachers, it actually develops something inside of you that's really powerful. It's this ability to do something and know that you have the power to do something and you can make something happen. And that happens only when you take initiative, when you do things without being told to do so, because you're you're sending a message to your brain saying, I can do this and it's me that's doing it. It's not somebody else that's forcing me to do so. Taking initiative now in elementary school is also the first step into taking initiative for the rest of your lives. You're starting habits at this age that will continue into junior high, into high school, and into adulthood. You can ask your parents, the people they work with who are successful, that are fun to be around, who really make a great difference in all of their spheres, are the people who take initiative. But they didn't start taking initiative yesterday. They started taking initiative when they were in elementary school and learned those habits and developed those skills so that now as adults, they can do amazing things because they've learned how to do things independently without being asked. One example of someone taking initiative is my wife. You might wonder why all the stories are coming from my family. Because I'm at home all the time. <laughs> well, my wife, when she was younger, she was in high school, she used to work at a summer camp called Camp Yorktown Bay in Arkansas. And at this camp, there were a bunch of different jobs. There was the waterfront director, there were ski instructors, there were people who would teach arts and crafts, camp counselors, kitchen staff, the list goes on and on. But one of the least popular jobs in all of the camp was the laundry person. And that was the job that my wife got stuck with when she was in high school. Now, people hated being the laundry person because they had to do all the laundry for all of the camp for the entire summer long. Now, again, taking initiative would mean that she would do the laundry and do it without being asked. Her boss would not have to come to her every day and say, did you get the laundry done? She would say, yeah, I, I'm going to do the laundry because that's my job. And I'm going to do it without being asked. But she took laundry work to a whole nother level. She started decorating the laundry room like a tiki hut. She had music playing. The laundry room soon became a hangout spot where other camp counselors wanted to go to because it was such a fun place to be. Also, when she would do the laundry, fold the laundry, get it ready to give back to all the camp counselors and whoever else needed it, she would tuck little pieces of chocolate and other little candies that were inside the laundry so that people really look forward to getting their laundry back. She also wrote encouraging notes and Bible verses and things that she had on index cards, and she would slip them into people's laundry just as an encouragement throughout the week. That's not just taking initiative to do your job without being asked. That's taking the whole nother step of initiative to think about what you could do to make your job amazing. The summer camp director said the next summer, three different people who had more fun jobs actually requested to be the laundry person because they thought it was such a fun job to have. The way that my wife took initiative in that experience shows that initiative is not only good for the camp director who didn't have to worry about getting the laundry done, but it's also something that's good for her. She enjoyed being the laundry person way more when she took initiative rather than being upset and complaining about doing laundry the whole summer long and it made the lives of other people so much better. In the same way, when you take initiative and decide to do things that no one's asked you to do, but you know will make the lives of others better, not only will it make their lives better, but you're also gonna feel better and more purpose when you realize that you're making a difference. This week's Grounded Challenge is two parts. It kinda depends what kind of person you are right now. If you're somebody who never does anything without being asked, 
then my challenge to you is to just do your responsibilities, the basic things that you know you should be doing without being asked this week. Whether it's doing the dishes, cleaning your room, finishing your math assignment, doing your AR reading, whatever those basic responsibilities are, do them this week without even being asked. Do them as if you're working for God and not just for doing it for your parents or for your teachers. If you're somebody who generally gets your responsibilities done, then I want to challenge you to the next step of initiative. I want you to think about things that you can do to make your homework even better. What could you do to make it more fun for your teacher to grade your homework? What could you do to make your house look even more amazing besides just the basic responsibilities your parents ask you to do? So I challenge you to take initiative this week. Just a few announcements I wanted to give you. First of all, we have week of prayer coming up next week. We have Pastor Chris Stanley from the Loma Linda University Church that will be sharing with us about being light shiners. You remember that one part of our spiritual theme this year is about being light seekers. And Pastor Shauna shared with us about that during the fall. But this spring, we want to talk about what it means to be a light shiner for Jesus. If you would like to get involved in a week of prayer, I'd encourage you to get involved in several ways. First of all, record a praise and worship song with yourself or with your entire family. I've already gotten a few that were sent in since last week, but choose any song that you think that most of the kids at our school would know and send me the lyrics and record yourself singing that song. You can play an instrument and sing it. You can have your parents play an instrument and you can sing along to it, or your whole family can sit on the couch together and sing the song together. In this way, I hope to get some of you involved in the praise and worship for a week of prayer. In the future, beyond week of prayer, if you'd like to get involved in our Grounded Kids Assembly, you'll notice that there were kids that did the Peace Builder Pledge, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, and prayer, and the school song. If you'd like to record any of those elements, just go ahead and record it on your parent's cell phone. Send it to me at ckoh at lla.org and I'd love to include you in future Grounded Kids Assemblies as long as we're doing distance learning. Finally, my wife and I put together a podcast every week called the Grounded Stories Podcast. It's a storytelling podcast that's made just for you in mind. And in this podcast, we address some of the things that you might be facing at home on a daily basis right now during this very strange season of life. But we do it in a fun way that hopefully you'll enjoy. This past week's episode actually addressed the topic of diligence and it relates quite closely to initiative. If you are listening to the podcast, I'd encourage you to take the challenge at the end of the podcast and record yourself with just a 10 to 15 second recording of what you did to do that challenge. Say your name, your grade level, and what you did to apply that challenge this week. Send that audio recording to me. That one won't be in video because it's just the podcast. And I'll include it at the end of the podcast episode. As you notice, we had quite a few students last week that did that, but this week, I don't have anyone yet. So if you want to participate, please send it to ckoh at lla.org. And finally, I would like to give out grounded awards at each one of our Grounded Kids assemblies. Just like our usual chapels where I pick out a card and say, this person is showing emotional intelligence or grit or integrity. But since you're at home, your teachers can't give you those cards anymore. So just a reminder to all those parents out there, please be on the lookout. If your child is applying one of our core values, emotional intelligence, respect, integrity, or grit, anytime at home, please shoot me an email at ckoh at lla.org to let me know what he or she did because I can select their name and call them out here on our Grounded Kids Assemblies. So far, I haven't received any of those as well. So parents, be on the lookout. I hope that these videos help you to feel connected and to stay grounded in Jesus while we're so far apart. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you again next time.